Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It is an absolutely beautiful sunny day here in North Carolina, man. I, it just doesn't get any better than this. It's like 74 degrees and partly cloudy. It's just great. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun. This video is by popular request. I've been asked at least 500 times by folks to go around and do a quick equipment tour on the farm. So today we're gonna go around, we're gonna look at each piece of equipment. We'll briefly talk about it. We'll talk about future plans with that equipment. We'll talk about horsepower. We'll talk about how we use it and what we do with it on the farm and just kind of cruise about the farm a little bit today and have some fun together. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Pound the like button. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel if you're new here. This is just a wonderful place to be. We're building a 150 acre farm here, a first generation farm in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Now we're going to show you the cool stuff. All right. Woo! Stony Bridge. So we've got a lineup right here, and this isn't all. This is just what I have down here close to the shop because just about everything here, aside from our Swisher Big Mo, needs work. It needs something done to it, and we'll talk about all that. Let's talk about first the Big Mo. So this is Big Mo, our, our Swisher mower. This is a 66 inch deck. It's a 31 horsepower Swisher mower. It's made in the USA right in Missouri. That is our zero turn mower that we frequently mow the yard here with. We've also got other mowers here on the farm, but this is one of the primary mowers that we use for mowing the yard. It also has a brush hog attachment. That brush hog attachment's really handy for keeping up fence lines and mowing fields. And you'll see in a future video we'll be out here mowing this field pretty soon now on to let's skip Earl let's just skip Earl for a second <laughs> and we're gonna go on to the Ventrac okay so the Ventrac also known as the honey badger is one of our mowing tractors this thing is a mower a landscape rake a stump grinder it is everything it has a 23 excuse me 24.8 horsepower Kubota diesel engine in it. It is an awesome, awesome tractor. It takes very little maintenance. It does a great job and you'll see, let's get a little closer, that it has eight tires. So it's got eight tires so you can mow steep, steep embankments. Over there is the pond. That's a steep embankment. You don't want to take a zero turn like the Swisher on something that's this steep, but that is a pond bank mowing machine. This will mow to the pond bank but that will get in the pond it's pretty awesome man let's move right along the line we're going to talk about the Kubota we'll talk about the utility vehicles and we're going to save Earl for last all right so let's go check out the Kubota all right so this is our Kubota X1140 really a great machine now this is another 24.8 horsepower nearly identical diesel engine nearly identical to the one that's in the Ventrac right here 24.8 horsepower it's a hydrostatically driven machine this thing has a convertible setup in the bed where you can fold the bed out and make it a four or five seater I think it's officially a four seater but three could fit across the back if they weren't quite as fat as I am so it can be a two-seater or it can be a four-seater or five-seater uh, the bed capacity on it is a little bit bigger than the little John Deere Gator over here we'll talk about the Gator here in a second and really why does someone need two utility vehicles on the farm well you tell me we've got 150 acres and sometimes there are five six ten fifteen twenty people working up here so when we've got all these people working here and we're building fences and stuff like that we need two utility vehicles or at least an ATV and a utility vehicle we bought the Kubota after we bought the John Deere. We had the John Deere for a while and we bought the Kubota because we wanted fuel consistency here on the farm. So if you think about it, diesel, diesel, at most everything is diesel here on the farm and I've got a big diesel tank. We're going to visit the trucks and everything today. We're going to see the Unicorn Dodge. We're going to see the Rotten Silver Dodge. We're going to see all this stuff. So if you think about it for fuel consistency, we got the diesel model 
uh, Kubota. Now that's the Kubota RTV X1140. We picked it up at Rocky Mount Tractor. We're going to step over here and take a quick look at the John Deere Gator. We've had the John Deere Gator for a little bit longer. Kubota's been here about a year and a half. John Deere Gator has been here since the inception of the farm, like 2013. Meet Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue is the John Deere Gator. This is a 2013 John Deere Gator. 825i it is a gasoline powered it has a little i believe it's a three cylinder gas engine we talk about horsepower the kubota was 24.8 horsepower the john deere gator is nearly 50 horsepower and you can do a lot of things to hype this thing up and make it really really powerful we got the flip down windshield the tops on it right now but i've got led light bars all over this machine one thing that's different about from the john deere gator to the Kubota is the John Deere Gator really didn't have, well, the lighting didn't cut the muster here on the farm. It just, it just didn't have the lighting and it didn't have the bed space. And it's a little tighter squeeze for a big guy. I'm six foot five, I'm about 200 and, well, now about 250 pounds. And it's a whole lot of dude to stuff in that little thing where you've got a lot more space in the Kubota X1140. That being said, this machine has been the most used piece of machinery on the farm until we picked up the Kubota X1140. So that's a testament to the toughness of this machine. I've just put new tires on it. In a future video, we've got some maintenance items to do. We have to replace an axle, which I lose CV boots on it a lot. It doesn't have guards on the CV boots like it should. The Kubota does. So I bust CV boots. When you bust a CV boot, you get just a grain of sand or a little bit of water in there and it's ruined. It's cheaper for me to buy a CV boot off the internet and pop it in there. It takes about eh, 45 minutes or so to pop out an axle and pop in a new axle. Uh, and we have a broken sway bar on this thing. This is the workhorse tool of the farm. The Kubota, which is right beside it, is more torquey and a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more sluggish. It's just let's just face facts that uh, hydrostatic drive system on the Kubota it simply isn't a rooster tail slinging machine like this thing right here this thing will do donuts and sling rooster tails and it's fun to take on trails and stuff like that where the Kubota is more the and now I'm the old man more the old man <laughs> kind of vehicle uh, did we need a cab? Do we need a cab? We're here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina we have very mild weather we sometimes need a cab. We have some cold days. We have some rainy days. However, the windshield is just fine and the roof is just fine. We leave the roof on the John Deere Gator all winter long and we take it off in the summer. So it's fall and the roof and the windshield is back on it for those cold days. When I have a helper on the farm, the helper takes the old machine and I keep the new machine and I go do my thing and he goes and does his thing. Cool. Let's move on to the next piece. All right, if you've been watching the YouTube channel for any amount of time, you've probably never seen this or you've seen it in the background. This is a water trailer. This is our ABI water trailer. It serves several purposes here on the farm. We've yet to introduce it. It's coming soon on a Tool Tuesday, but this is an awesome, awesome piece of equipment that we can pull it with the truck or we can pull it with the tractor. This allows us to have portable water anywhere on the farm, a 1,000 gallon water tank portable potable water portable drinking water for our cattle so we don't have full-on water systems all over the farm we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of about 85 to 90 acres fenced so we have temporary water systems and this is part of the temporary water system it also has a spray rig on the back of it because we live on a dirt or gravel road so in those hot summer months we'll be able to fire up the pump and we'll be able to wet down the road and keep dust down which is super duper cool on our driveway and on our gravel road out here it also has a not a fire hose but it has a fire hose nozzle we'll say so it's not officially a firefighting machine however I can tote a thousand gallons along with me and if we were baling hay or we were working with something that was flammable or we had a fire out in our pasture we could probably stop that fire we could wet the ground down ahead of the fire with this machine also, and you'll see this in a future video when we start working on the uh, John Deere Gator doing all those repairs, that thing is an equipment washing awesome tool. So we could take it anywhere on the farm and wash down a piece of equipment. If we got a barn or something that needs to be washed down, hosed down, it's got bees nest all over it or whatever, this thing will do it. It's got a little pump on there. You pull it, you start it. It's a Honda motor. And again, that's an ABI water trailer, 1,000 gallon potable water trailer. It's heavy. 
real heavy. On to the next thing, and the next thing we go look at is, well, let's go down to this lower tractor shed real quick. Now you're thinking to yourself, ah, you don't need all that equipment, you don't need all that stuff. Let me tell you, man, I need it. I need equipment to mow all of this. I need equipment to have multiple people down here working with me on the farm. The next piece of equipment I'm gonna show you is not mine, it's my father's. It's just here on the farm for us to do some repairs and some work to it, and we'll show you the sawmill. Stick around to the end. We're gonna show you the pickup trucks and all that stuff too, so we've got a lot of stuff going on. This is our garden spot, taken over by weeds this year, and these are our laying hens right here. All right, this is a cool old rig right here, man. This is a Massey Ferguson industrial tractor. It's basically the sheet metal of a Massey Ferguson 240 tractor, and you'll see our 240 here in just a few minutes. However, it has the heavy duty loader system. It's built heavier. It has a stronger engine. That thing will pull down a house. Dad bought this. This is a model 30C. No, 30B, dad has a model 20C. And dad bought this because he's like, well, if my one tractor gives out, I'll always have this one right here. And he got a deal on it, so he scooped it up. But it has a hole in the bucket, a little tiny pinhole rusted through the bucket. And I offered to change it over to a quick attach bucket. So that's what a future video is gonna be. We're gonna take off the Massey Ferguson bucket and we're gonna put the quick attach uh, skid steer attach bucket. That way, that way dad can use most any tool he wants to use uh, hooked right up to this tractor. I'm not sure what the future holds for this thing. It's around a 42 horsepower tractor, 42 PTO horsepower. I think it's severely underrated, to be honest with you. Great bush hog and tractor, great all-around tractor, good for working all over the farm, and the paint looks great on it, but let me tell you, a little bit closer, you can't tell on TV, it was painted with a brush. I'm not really a fan of the brush paint, but it looks a lot better than it did. This tractor has somewhere in the neighborhood of only 380 hours on it. It was bought by a gentleman, and evidently he used it on his property and he passed away and it sat out in the rain for a number of years and just got surface rust all over it. So that's the story of the old Massey Ferguson. Again, I think it's a 30B. Now, let's go see the wood miser. Lots of future content is gonna be coming out of this guy. This is our wood miser LT40 hydraulic. It's not the super hydraulic. I don't know what the difference is with the super hydraulic and the hydraulic, but I do know it's an LT40. It will cut up to a 21 foot log and it has a big engine on it. I keep forgetting what the horsepower is. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 32 horsepower. Uh, Hold on, let me go look at the thing real quick. I knew it had the big engine. It's a 38 horsepower Kohler engine on this critter right here. I've got a lot of blades for it, so we're gonna do a whole lot of cutting with this machine. As soon as I get caught up on the farm, I got a lot of mowing to do, I've got some repairs to do, and you're gonna see some of the vehicles that I've gotta repair pretty soon. The skid steer, skiddy bop, is broken down for sure. But that's the Woodmiser LT40, and that is going in a shed later today because I don't want it sitting out in the rain. It's too nice of a piece of equipment to have out in the rain. All right, on to the next thing. I think we'll go see Earl. We'll talk about Earl real, real quick. Then we'll head up to the tractor shed, and we'll talk about the other tractor that's up there. There are two more tractors, and then we'll go to the trucks. All right, almost forgot another tractor. There's three more tractors. <laughs> All right, so you guys, if you follow the channel, then you've seen this tractor. A gentleman bought this from me. This was one of Dad's tractors. Dad was born in 1952, and the 52 Willis Jeep, which we're going to visit too, is in the uh, shop. And this is a 52 International Farmall. International Farmall. It says International on it, but it's a Farmall Super A Industrial. This tractor was originally a yellow tractor. It has the old hand crank right there for starting it, and I know it runs because I've seen it run. Dad used to crank it every month. It stayed in our basement of our house for years and years until I bought it from Dad to bring down here, get it running, and enjoy it here on the YouTube channel. So we've got some tools that mount up to this thing, like a grain mill. The grain mill's up in the tractor shed, so we will get this thing running we'll get it in the shop we'll get it running probably just need some points adjustments and stuff like that but that is a 1952 international super a farm all super a with uh industrial tractor so it was yellow most of these tractors were red so it's a pretty rare little machine it's a cool piece of lawn art right now though i need to get on it 
FYI, that is about 800 pounds of chicken feed. We have 35 new meat birds coming. And also, there's a security camera on you, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time up here on the farm. Security is something that we take really, really seriously. Everything is alarmed and everything is on camera. So that's how we roll. All right, this is Earl. This is the funnest new tractor that we have here on the farm. We picked Earl up out of a field and Earl was not running, nor was Earl able to move. We got Earl running on the farm. I'll post a link at the end of this video to the Everything Tractor series so you can see how we got Earl back to running. We got a new set of nice Continental tires on Earl. We've got a lot more work to do with Mr. Earl. We've got some serious exhaust problems going on. That thing blows smoke in your face the whole time you're mowing or the whole time you're tilling. We put the tiller on the back and this is the tractor that we tilled the garden with. It has the Continental gas engine and it's around 42 horsepower. Pretty cool old tractor. Uh, just an Art Deco looking piece of equipment. I, I really, really like Earl. I think you guys post it down there in the comments if you'd like to see Earl on a t-shirt. I think we're going to do an Earl t-shirt. Like, uh, uh, what is it? Roadkill? Roadkill Garage. They put their cars on a t-shirt. It'll say Earl and then it'll have a picture of him. What do you think? Let me know. Let's head up to the tractor shed. Guys, I totally forgot about this little gem up here. So this is a Ford F7000 or 7000 series. It's a circa 1982 7000 series pickup truck. It has the Caterpillar diesel engine in it. It's a dump truck. It's not a pickup truck. It's a dump truck. Now, this is a farm vehicle. I will post a link scrolling across the top of when we went to pick this thing up. I traded a mountain bike for that critter right there. And so far, it's been a great truck. It needs service, and there's a lot of work that we're going to be doing to it in the future. Dressing it up, cleaning it up a little bit, and changing the oil and stuff. A lot of people have asked while we were clearing land, well, how come we aren't using your dump truck? Look at it. Look at it. It needs work. It needs love. It needs to be serviced. That thing is in no way ready for a 10 hour day, I'll tell you that. Let's get over here in the tractor shed and take a look at the John Deere and the Massey 240. This is the first tractor I ever bought in my entire life. When we first bought our farmland, we thought we'd get a brand new tractor. We'd start with a brand new Kubota and a brand new tractor. This is our John Deere 5065E. It is a pre-tier 4 emissions tractor, meaning uh, it doesn't have all the emissions equipment and stuff on it. It doesn't have def fluid or anything that we put in it. We're going to show you some cool little treats, the little uh, Stony Ridge touches that we put on this tractor. And it's got the Woods BB72 Extreme Duty uh, brush hog on the back of it. So this is a 50 series John Deere tractor, okay? So they make a 5045, a 5065, and a 5075, I do believe. The 5065 is supposed to be around 65 horsepower. It is around 53 horsepower to the PTO, but I believe the engine horsepower is around 65. One of you guys let me know, one of you equipment o files let me know. It has the heavy duty H240 loader system on it with the quick attach skid steer type uh, connector. I would never, ever, ever buy a tractor, a new tractor, a used tractor, any sort of tractor that didn't have the skid style, skid steer style quick connect, okay? Now you can buy an aftermarket skid steer quick connect for the John Deere specific. Let me show you what I'm talking about so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about here. So this is the skid steer style quick connect for your implements and your buckets and things that go on the front of the tractor. You can see hydraulic hoses here. We have a hydraulic remote that's operated by a handle right here so we can put a grapple on this. Basically, this little lip right here scoops up underneath the implement and then you throw two arms down. You can see the arms 
right there, you throw those two arms down and it locks that piece of equipment in place. We've got a couple sets of pallet forks, one for the skid steer, one for this tractor. We've got a couple grapples here on the farm. We've got some boom arms. We've got all sorts of stuff and everything is skid steer, quick attach compatible. You need to have consistency. Like we spoke of fuel consistency earlier, you need to have consistency with your tractors, with your hookups like that. The goal with putting that skid steer quick attach from Titan Attachments on dad's tractor down there is so that he can use a grapple also and that might be in his Christmas uh, stocking if he's playing his cards right. It'd be a good thing to give dad because dad needs it. Dad's getting older and he can't pick up logs and stuff like that. Let's show you a little personal touch that I gave to this tractor because it had something on it that was pretty cheesy and we made it a lot better. So this tractor came with this toolbox. This is the toolbox. This little plastic critter right here is a toolbox. You can't even put a big wrench in that thing. This is what I put my hearing protection, my earplugs and stuff like that in there and anything like rubber gloves that I might need to wear while I'm getting ready to grease equipment. We also have a saw haul on here. My buddy Kenny owns a company saw haul. He's a great guy. It's American made product saw haul. We drop our chainsaw right down in there. Awesome. It's mounted up to uh, a spot that really is out of the way. What we have here is my custom ammo can uh, toolbox and if you open up the toolbox you can flip it open in different ways but down inside there I've got some rags, uh, lich pins, all sorts of pins and stuff in case you lose something on the tractor. Uh, I also keep an air duster in there. The air duster like you'd spray to clean your computer screen or clean your computer keyboard. I use that air duster. You know how I use it? right back here on the rear remotes. So if I've got to pop something out on the rear remote or the front remote and I've got to hook something else up, I take the air duster and I spray it out. That way I'm not introducing contaminants into the hydraulic system on the tractor. Let's check out the 240. This is one of the funnest little workhorses on the farm. I don't want to jinx it, but this is the tractor that the only problem I've ever had with it is that it, the battery won't hold charge like it should when it's sitting up here in the shed. And I could probably solve that problem with a little battery tender or have a little solar panel stuck up here and keep the battery topped off. But this is a Massey Ferguson 240, circa 1986. Again, the sheet metal on this is very similar to dad's industrial tractor down there. So a lot of the parts, I believe, will swap over. This tractor has had a complete restoration before I got it, and it has only about 800 hours on it. I think when we got it, it had about 600. This is a permanent tractor on the farm, a permanent staple on the farm, and so is the John Deere 5065. Other pieces of equipment are gonna come and go. Now, remember we talked about the grain mill? Right there is the grain mill that we're gonna be using with the farm all tractor. Pretty cool. Let's step around the corner here, show you some of the stuff, some of the things that we use all the time. So this is a Woods seven foot scrape blade. I love the scrape blade, does a great job. We've got some buckets over here, a row better, hay spear, lane shark. We're gonna be doing a lane shark video pretty soon. We've gotta go down the edges of our fields and the lane shark is cool. It goes on the front, skid steer quick attach or John Deere quick attach, either one. It goes on the front, you can have it mowing like this, you can have it mowing like this. You can also have it mowing offset. So the tractor's here and it's offset to the side. And that's most likely the configuration we'll be using with the Lane Shark this coming year. This is our uh, wood chipper. It's a Titan Attachments wood chipper. And there's a few other little pieces of equipment. The Batwing mower. We've got fencing right here because we've got a lot more fence to build. That wing mower right there, it has some huge hydraulic problems. It is too big for the 5065. It's, it's just way too big for that tractor. So we got to get a bigger tractor before we can use that big old heavy duty bat wing. And I got to clean up my mess. <laughs> we put new front tires on, this, on the uh, John Deere Gator and those are the front tires. Got to go dispose of those properly. Uh, let's look at other tools real quick before we go down and we look at trucks and we look at popcorn the willis jeep so here's another bucket this is a bucket that came with our john deere tractor this is the tr3 rake this is the tractor rake three in one uh rake for smoothing and clearing land it works great on horse arenas it works great on flat gravel areas it works great on crowning a driveway and it also works where we're going to go work it in the next few weeks as soon as it dries up up here by the newest pond that we just built on the farm we'll show you guys how to seed for success let's go down check out the trucks 
and then check out the Willis Jeep. Couple more implements we've got up here. I just wanted to show you. We got a three bottom plow, an old Ford three bottom plow. When we first bought the farm, I had to turn the land. Uh, this is a tree clip from Precision Manufacturing, and over there is the landscape rake for the Venn track. We'll be using that in a future video around the pond. This is the body from Popcorn the Willis Jeep. Sitting up here, it's got muscadine <laughs> grapes growing all over it. Uh, that's the old body. We've got a brand new body and really the Jeep is just down to the bare frame So we've got to get it painted We've got to find the time and make the space in the shop to do that All right as we're driving down the hill I want to show you some of the stuff that's going to be in future videos here We've got a set of tracks from tracks plus sitting right here And we've got a set of grouser tracks right here for skitty bop uh, We're gonna compare the two sets of tracks this is our cattle handling equipment. We went to Tartar Farm and Ranch and picked up some, well, we went to Rural King and picked up this Tartar Farm and Ranch uh, cattle handling equipment. This is more wire for our fence projects that we have coming. And we have a stump bucket for pulling stumps out and an ABI classic manure spreader. And that'll be put to use probably sometime in the next three weeks. I've got a big pile of horse manure that we're gonna be putting out on some spots that really need attention. We also have a woods cedar up there, precision super cedar. Now, let's go see the unicorn. Guys, this is a 2000 model Cummins 24 valve diesel three quarter ton Dodge Ram pickup. This truck I bought somewhere in the neighborhood of six or seven years ago with 120,000 miles on it nearly a 20 year old truck it now only has about 145,000 miles something like that on it it's a great vehicle i don't really drive it as much as i should and i really should be putting it on the road because these diesel trucks love to be driven we'll open it up let you take a look in the inside and we'll also look underneath the fender and show you just how clean this thing is okay so this is the laramie edition and the seats man the seats are just like new everything's just like new of course it has a small crack in the dashboard so we put a little dash mat on there and these are awesome i'll post a link to you these are extreme catch-all mats and this mat goes across the whole front uh, floorboard of the inside of the dodge and it's just awesome it keeps the mud down and out of your vehicle all right underneath well this is why <laughs> this is why it's the unicorn it looks just as good let me get you under here it looks just as good underneath as it does up top look at how clean that is this thing is a clean truck now i've avoided driving in snow and stuff like that we've got a rusty dodge up here in the 2500 gas so we'll go up here and see old rusty silver so rusty silver has seen better days on every farm you need a farm truck and rusty silver the bottom of the doors are rusted out really really bad it's got rust in the bed it's got holes rusted through the bed i think this vehicle was a uh what do you call it a snow belt vehicle it was in the in the salt belt it was a northern vehicle like ohio or something like that this side is not quite as beat up as that side, but we still have a lot of rust issues. Let me squat down here and show you. So the door, and I didn't notice this, but this has been painted different than this. What the guy did before I bought this truck was he took that silver uh, like HVAC tape, like duct tape basically, and taped this all up covered up the rust ground out the rust taped it all up and painted it the same exact color as the truck so i had no idea whatsoever this is our fuel truck for the farm we've got a hundred gallon fuel tank and we ran up on a deal on this hundred gallon fuel tank in my fuel tanks i'm going to open well i can't open it i got some fuel filters sitting over here every time beyond the shadow of a doubt and i'm going to do a video about this too these are fuel filters from the ventrac yesterday i was doing a little maintenance flip this up and let me show you every time we fill this diesel fuel tank this 100 gallon tank we always put huh, it's not in there <laughs> diesel power service i'm going to do a video about it how to keep water out of your fuel and keep it from gelling it doesn't get cold enough for fuel to gel around here but we do get a lot of condensation in these tanks and water will get in it underneath the hood the hood's popped up right now 
because they're alligator clips going to the battery that run the pump. 100 gallon tank. That's the old silver rusty dodge. That's not the unicorn. Now, let's look at Skiddy Bop the skid steer. Okay, this is Skiddy Bop. This is our John Deere skid steer. This is a either a 1999 or 2000 model John Deere 250. It has an identical engine in it to our John Deere tractor, the big John Deere tractor up there, the 5065. So this is around a 65 to 62 horsepower machine. It's not a real heavy machine. And on it is our Dan user tree puller. It's called the Intimidator. We did a video on that, I guess, last week. That thing is awesome. It's a tree puller, stump puller, post puller, uh, stump bucket, saw. It, it just does everything. It's an all-in-one grapple, everything. So we bought Skitty Bop, and let me tell you the story of Skitty Bop because it's kind of sad. I think I got hoodooed. So I took you guys along when I went to go pick up Skitty Bop. Skitty Bop was owned by a farmer, and then the farmer passed away, and it was owned by a landscaper. Skitty Bop's hour meter only said like 280 something hours. Skitty Bop showed a little more wear than 280 something hours, and I probably should have done my homework a little bit better. I don't think that the guy that sold it to me knew the entire history of this machine. However, I got up with John Deere, and anytime you buy a piece of equipment that's a John Deere piece of equipment and it's been serviced by John Deere, then there are records. And the records showed that the computer uh, was was swapped out there's a hour meter and a whole computer system that was swapped out on this machine at around 850 hours something 850 to 900 hours so what we've got here is probably a machine with 1200 or 1400 hours on it i say who dude we paid thirteen thousand dollars for this machine i think it's a great deal with tracks on it it's absolutely unstoppable it does great it don't do good at all in the mud with these tires on it so We'll put the tracks on for the winter time. We do the tires in the summertime. We've got a steel deck trailer, so I can't haul this machine around with the metal tracks unless I put rubber mats down. I don't have rubber mats to put down. So the easiest thing to do is leave the tires on without the tracks in case I go off the farm to do some stuff like help my dad or help my neighbor like we did the other day when we were working with the Dan user. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, all of the fans, there are kitties everywhere in here, <laughs> all the fans of popcorn, the Willis Jeep, there is my Willis and there's cats everywhere and the body is sitting right over here. I've got new body, new fenders, everything is in here for popcorn to be put back together. The engine's sitting right there everything's ready i've got to get a set of tires this thing runs it drives it just needed a new body on it the body was just all two pieces so this is a 1952 willis cj3a some say willis some say willies i say willis and i think the literature says willis so that's popcorn the willis and we've got room in here to work we also have got some old trail hondas and stuff like that back in there that's going to be future videos too but that's it, that's the equipment tour. And I'm sorry I'm not working on the Jeep today, but I promise you, once we get caught up with mowing, I've got some stumps to pick up right out here. You can see this mess back here behind us. I've got a lot of work to do. So I gotta go. Guys, hope you enjoyed the little equipment tour we have here. I gotta jump on the Swisher and get busy mowing the yard right here. Swisher has agreed to a coupon code that's nearly a thousand dollars off. I'll post it down there in the video description for you. That's the big mow. And man, they have been rocking and rolling with this whole, uh, I guess there's a whole movement back to the land. And this thing is a, a, a great tool that you can use for mowing your lawn and mowing your pasture. So if you have like a small acreage, like five, maybe eight, maybe 10 acres, you can put the brush hog on this and you don't have to buy a big expensive tractor if you're not doing tractor chores. So that's cool. Guys, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed the equipment tour. I gotta get busy. I gotta pack all this stuff in, put it in its sheds, lock it up, hide the keys. Uh, we've got a lock box for all of our keys. We'll do a video on that too. We keep everything locked up, cameras everywhere. There's probably four cameras on me right now, so it's a good time. We also have done some videos on home security, and see that critter right there? Part of the home security system. There are cameras all up and down our road because, I don't know, I don't want anything to come up missing. If it does, I got record of who's in here and who's out of here. All right, we'll see you guys next time on the Stony Ridge. I got to get busy mowing. All righty. Woo. We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife.
bring the kids to live in life.